Hey everybody, it's Winning Wednesday time. We will be going over the very important NCLEX topic of breastfeeding. And I have five challenging NCLEX questions based on the content that we go over tonight. So good evening, all of my Remar family. Winning Wednesday is your opportunity to make up if you haven't been winning today. Sometimes you might look over the day and say, wow, I really did not study as much as I wanted to. I really didn't get to that. Like I didn't go over any content today. I didn't bust out my notes today. And so Winning Wednesday is our community event that we do in the in the evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, and it's just a way for us to win the day still. All right. So this is a live class that we're doing. I do this every week for you. There is your goals. They're there. They're very much important to me. So we're going to go over this topic. Hey, everybody, you just made it. You just made it because we're just getting started. And so again, our topic on tonight, NCLEX prepping for the Remar nurses is breastfeeding. Okay. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. And yes, let me say this. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you got the notification that I was live. And those are the kind of alarms you need to be setting for yourself. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and you will know every single time I decide to pop up and go live. Winning Wednesday, let's begin. So we're talking about breastfeeding. Now, you have to know the advantages of breastfeeding for NCLEX. Um, and, and why do mothers breastfeed? Because breastfeeding is one of the most effective ways for you to make sure that the baby survives. Now, there are other things that you can do, keeping the baby warm, keeping them out of the cold, but breastfeeding them, feeding them nutrition is by far effective just the same. Okay. All right. Um, and so the statistics show that globally, um, three and five babies are not breastfed in the first hour of life. Why is that? Because breastfeeding presents challenges. All right. It's not, I mean, and some people, you know, some people really get on their hobby horses, like, okay, breast is best. And, um, that is what you should do all the time if possible, but sometimes it's challenging to breastfeed as a woman to breastfeed your baby. Sometimes there are other factors that make you successful in this endeavor or not successful. So indeed, when we talk about this idea to tell mothers or try to support mothers who are breastfeeding, know that yes, it's natural, but doggone it, it's hard. It is hard to do. So um, the benefits of breastfeeding the benefits of breastfeeding to the mother. Yes, there are benefits to the mother that you should be aware of. It's not all about baby. It's not all about baby. Mothers who breastfeed their infants have a lower risk of these things. Did you know this? This may show up on the questions later on. I don't know, but here's the content. Mothers have a lower risk of um, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type 2 diabetes mellitus, and hypertension. Now, this is not an NCLEX question. All of these are going to be benefits of a mom breastfeeding. Shout out to my almost 300 nurses. You made it to the live class tonight. It's winning Wednesdays. And by God, you got here because with God, it's possible even for you to show up and study with me tonight. And we are talking about breastfeeding. And so um, tag your nursing friends, tag your buddies. We in it, we're in it right now. And the benefits to the infant are infants who are breastfed have a lower risk of asthma, obesity, type one diabetes, severe lower respiratory disease, acute otitis media, sudden infant death syndrome, 
and gastrointestinal infections. Oh yes, lots of benefits to the baby when, 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 when they are breastfed, when they are breastfed. So shout out to all the breastfeeding moms. You are making a huge sacrifice. But you guys also need to know that there are some infants who, for the NCLEX exam, should not be breastfed. The contraindications to breastfeeding, um, or even this, um, NCLEX may say this, express breast milk. What is express breast milk? Is it like um, breast milk that's like uh, a cappuccino? Is it expressed? Is it faster? What does it mean if we say expressed breast milk? We have nursing students in our Remark community. When we come together and study, you guys know we have nursing students from all over, from all different backgrounds and all different stages. We even have some nursing enthusiasts who are not even in the field of nursing, but they like in what we talk about. And so in the comments, don't be afraid to add your notes. I asked you what is express breast milk? And I got, I got some good answers. It's when you pump. Yep. It's when you pump, you pumped it out. And so that is express breast milk. So infants who have galactosemia, Okay, galactosemia uh, is a rare genetic metabolism disorder. Hey, shout out to nurse Letitia Davis RN. Shout out to you, she says, I passed my NCLEX with Remar. Thank you so much, Regina, Mark, and the Remar family. No, thank you. Thank you, because um, in a world of many NCLEX preparation choices, you gave us a chance and you came and you studied with me. So it is a huge honor to be a part of your journey. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best in your nursing career. All right, new RN, man, that's the goal. Congratulations, congratulations. So we're talking about infants who should not be breastfed. And there's one genetic disorder here that I have uh, where you cannot tolerate mama's milk. Can you guys think of something else? I mean, that I may have missed. I just have one here. Um, usually the focus is on the mom not being appropriate to express her milk or she should not be the one who is breastfeeding. So of course, if mom has HIV, because um, HIV can be transmitted through breast milk, human T cell, lymphotrophic virus type one or type two, you may not have heard about that one. You may not have heard about that one. So just take a second, look it up, Google it, Google it. Um, suspected or confirmed Ebola virus disease. Did you know that that is a contraindication of breastfeeding? Okay, a contraindication of breastfeeding. And so um, these are reasons why a baby... Okay, these are reasons why a baby is unavailable to the mom for breastfeeding. And that's okay um, because the mom is still able to bond with her baby. All right. Now, um, make sure that again, when you are taking notes, all right, it, when you are taking notes, you are writing down, okay, you are writing down everything that you are not familiar with. Now, I'm getting a lot of questions in the comments, which I do appreciate, about breastfeeding contraindications. So what if the mother has tuberculosis? I think that's a great question. I'll try to answer everyone. I see I got a ton of questions. Um, what if the mom has tuberculosis? That's a great situation. Have you guys, um, have you guys come in, con uh, have you encountered that in your studying in nursing school in notes? Um, if the mom has tuberculosis and she is under treatment, she is able to breastfeed, okay? So if the mom is on medications, yep, and she is being actively treated for TB, she can breastfeed. If the mother at the time of delivery is not under treatment and has active tuberculosis, she should not breastfeed, okay? All right. Good question. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. 
let's move on to let's move on oh i gotta say one more thing or the team will get me <laughs> all right so if you passed um the, the remark t-shirts that you guys see me with the way you get those t-shirts is super simple if you pass with Remar, you can get your free t-shirt by going to remarnurse.com slash party, dot party. Is it dot party? Remarnurse dot party. Okay. All right. Now let's get back into this content. Let's get back into this content. All right. Moving on, we are going to now get into, we are now going to get into things that are um, successfully contributing to breastfeeding, okay? Number one, hospital policies in terms of um, the baby should be, the baby should be allowed to breastfeed. The baby should be allowed to breastfeed in the hospital. That's where it should be initiated. Two, and you can kind of think about your experiences if you are a mom who's attempted to breastfeed or what you've learned in nursing school, right? All these things, uh, or what you may have seen during your clinicals, all these things are important. Staff competency. It is very um, discouraging to try to, um, it's, it's very, it's very uh, discouraging to try to teach a mom to do something that you're not really sure how to do, <laughs> right? And so being a competent nurse is in line with being a safe nurse. So if you find yourself, check this out. If you're a new nurse and you find yourself taking a position on a respiratory progressive care unit and you have patients who have trachs, vents, um, getting uh, solumedrol, albuterol, and you think that it's okay for you to work on that floor for a period of time and not understand those treatments, you're wrong. Not understand the, um, the situation your patients is, that's not right, okay? And so it's the same, if you want to work on a maternity floor, if you want to deliver babies, you need to understand and know how to educate your patient on how to breastfeed. Whether you have breastfed yourself as a nurse or whether you have learned about it in nursing school, it's your responsibility to be competent in where you practice. And a lot of new jobs that you guys will be uh, interviewing for and signing up with may not give you orientation on every single patient that you see. You'll be happy. You are lucky if you get any orientation at all. But if you don't get the orientation, it is important for you to go the extra mile, go the extra mile and make sure that you're aware of how to do these things. OK, that is how you win after NCLEX, being competent. All right. Antenatal care. I'm moving on to number three. Get off that hobby horse. I'm not fussing at y'all today. I want you to be I want you to be great nurses. But a lot of that is what you do on your own time. That's it. Antenatal care number three, we're talking about successful tips for breastfeeding. Um, and so before the baby is born, talking about breastfeeding, giving tips and advice, having uh, prenatal care. If a woman is not going to her prenatal visits, it is quite possibly that she's not all that interested in the health of the child. It's quite possible that she has some other priorities that are not pregnancy. And I say this not judging, okay? I'm saying this not judging because sometimes with antenatal care, the more babies you have, the less you feel the need to go to every single doctor's appointment. Am I telling the truth? I don't know. I mean, there's no judgment here in this room, but sometimes moms who have more than one baby, the second time around, you're just not that jazzed to go sit in the OB clinic for two, three hours. You're just really not. And so part of us being competent is understanding where our patient is. I'm a mother of three kids. So the third time being pregnant, you kind of, <laughs> you know what is going on. And so um, when we are doing our education, when we are visualizing our patients, a lot of next generation 
is going to be to draw out your own prejudices. Is that a word? About situations in different groups of people. So you have a mom with seven, eight kids. She might not show up until the due date. And she might just show up in the emergency room like, it's time for me to have a baby. All right. So before you judge her, know her situation. All right. Getting back into it. Um, care after birth. Okay. Um, sometimes if a mother does not have the support that she needs, uh, she may have to outsource it. You may have to send the baby to daycare if you can't be a stay at home mom. And so if you're sending your child to daycare for eight hours so you could go to work, breastfeeding may be a little challenging to establish. Okay. Support mothers with breastfeeding. Yes, if you have a supportive group of moms, that is going to help you stick with it, especially in the beginning when it's very difficult. Can you guys think of some complications of breastfeeding in the beginning that may prohibit a mom from wanting to continue? And so uh, it's just like, it's just like me. <laughs> oh, it's just like me. We have, a, we have a study group right now and I am the mom who has done it. And I'm trying to tell you guys, yes, it's painful in the beginning. Yes, it hurts really bad. You may have some bleeding. You may have some sleepless nights. All right. You may look at the thing and ask yourself, why? Why? We're talking about the NCLEX. We're not talking about babies right now, but the similarities are there. And so I'm telling you guys, once you get over a certain point, it gets easy. Once you pass your NCLEX exam, things will be significantly easier. There'll be less bleeding, right? There'll be less pain. There'll be less sacrifices. And so when a mom is trying to breastfeed, when she sees a mom who's like, yeah, you're going to get past the point where things are going to be a lot better for you, then she can continue on the journey. So this is what we're doing Winning Wednesday. I'm telling you guys, continue on the journey. Six, supplementing milk. Um, supplementing milk can... Um, sometimes it can be a detriment to your milk production. And so you have to be kind of careful with ad adding or giving your baby formula. Cause you might look at that formula and say, man, this is so much easier. This is so much less painful. The latching it's the latching on. All right. <laughs> that hurts rooming in mom should be allowed to stay with their baby because that creates a bond. And it also stimulates milk production, responsive feeding, when a baby is crying, the mom is basically feeding on demand. That helps. That helps. Um, also, the, the letdown that, cre that happens when a baby cries, the mom will literally feel the milk letting down in her breasts and it will be ready to come out to quiet that baby. Bottles, teats, and pacifiers, they actually um, can help with the breastfeeding infant because they help to strengthen that um, the, the, the sucking muscles that the babies have. Usually they are pretty strong already, but some babies who are premature may not have developed the coordination and the, the skills to do it. So a pacifier helps to work those muscles out and discharging instructions as well. These are all steps to successful breastfeeding. All right. This is what we talked about here. You do, for the purposes of NCLEX, have to know about um, breast engorgement and infection. We're going to talk about all of them. So common challenges of breastfeeding, not having enough milk to feed your baby. Now, in the very beginning, I want you guys to realize when a newborn is born, although they have this really great ability to root and they have a really great ability to nurse, their stomachs are like this big. Somebody in the maternity, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like this big when they're born. They don't need a lot of milk. So the colostrum that the mom produces, somebody write that word down, colostrum that the mother produces the first couple days after delivery is indeed enough to feed that baby. So there's a lot of misconception that, um, you know, when a mom delivers a baby, she should be pumping uh, or producing bottles full of milk. And that's not true. So um, we have to tell moms that your colostrum 
is literally filled with everything that neonate needs. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Too much milk, too much milk uh, can be a challenge uh, where a mom uh, is overproductive. The baby is not interested in drinking all that. Babies are just as tired as the mothers. They have been through a whole ordeal where now they are on the outside and it's cold and it's bright and it's very loud. So sometimes babies, they are not interested in eating at the time. So the mom can produce too much milk. Sore nipples are also a challenge of breastfeeding because if the infant's latching on to the areola is not proper, then the nipple is not made to um, have that much contact, right? The, uh, the goal is to produce the milk, not be a pacifier. And so um, some moms, after a few days, when they experience that, that bleeding and that rawness, they give up. They don't want to do it anymore. It's a challenge to breastfeeding. Leaking. Leaking can be prohibitive to mothers because it is embarrassing. It damages, you know, your clothes, depending on what you like to wear. Um, it's also another thing you have to manage along with a newborn. You also have um, postpartum bleeding. And so all of these things, all of these things can create leaking in the mom and they don't want to deal with it, okay? Breast engorgement, this is something that you do have to know for your NCLEX exam. Breast engorgement is essentially when the, the breasts are full of milk and they're hard and they're painful, okay? They're hard and they're painful. And this can be relieved. It's very common. I actually see it. Um, I actually see it in moms who, number one, uh, well, there's three groups of moms I see it in. And you don't have to have this memorized at all. I'm just telling you from my experience, moms who um, have infants who have passed away. And so- when they deliver their baby, um, either very close to a full-term pregnancy, uh, then they will produce milk, but there will be no baby to drink the milk. And so they have painful stages of engorgement. Also, moms whose babies are um, ending up separated from them, perhaps they are born and they have to go to NICU for observation. And so they're not able to establish normal breastfeeding patterns. And so they have engorgement as well. And so, yes, yes, yes. And um, so cabbage leaves, I think there's another group I'm trying to remember. Cabbage leaves are what is recommended on the NCLEX exam to reduce the pain of engorgement. Frozen cabbage leaves. Make sure you make a note on that, okay? Yes, cabbage leaves. And so that is um, that is going to be the recommended treatment for breast engorgement, as well as frequent breastfeeding or pumping. Pumping. There was another group of women who suffer from engorgement. Hmm. It'll come to me, okay? It'll, it'll come to me. Feed the baby. Yes, 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 yes. The last, um, the last barrier or challenge to breastfeeding is, oh yes, that is so true. Let me go back to this comment. When you're trying to wean your baby, that's true. When you're trying to wean your baby off of the breast, whether you're transitioning them to a cup or, hey, it's just time. It's just time, okay? Um, you can also experience engorgement because the frequency of nursing decreases. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's how teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. So um, infection, particularly mastitis, somebody put that on the screen. We're going to talk about mastitis here. Now, mastitis is very, very painful. It is very, very painful to the breastfeeding mom. And mastitis is usually caused by a staph infection. Uh, our, our staff gets inside of the breast duct. And it's very easy. It's very easy for staff to get inside of the breast duct because we carry staff on us, right? There's staff on our skin. There's staff in our mouth. There's staff in the baby's mouth. 
And so what happens is that staph gets up into the breast duct and it becomes a very painful infection. You can literally see this infection manifesting from the outside, which is important uh, because as, an, as a nurse, you have to recognize symptoms and cues. And so if you see red streaks on a swollen, hard, painful breast of a mom who is breastfeeding, you can know that this is not engorgement, this is mastitis. And you have to know the difference between the two because one needs antibiotics and the other doesn't. So engorgement, not gonna do antibiotics. Mastitis, you're gonna do antibiotics. Yeah, some of you have had it, right? It's very painful from what I hear. Another thing about mastitis is um, this, and that is, that the mom must continue to breastfeed during the, um, the painful swollen breast experience. And that is a huge teaching point because part of relieving the infection, part of clearing out that breast duct requires the mom to continue to breastfeed or pump, which is extremely painful, extremely painful for the mother to do. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge teaching point. Um, another thing is, oh, another thing is you have to know the antibiotic that you can give during breastfeeding because you can't put the mom on a tetracycline, right? So what is that antibiotic that is safe for pregnant or breastfeeding women? We're doing content tonight. I hope you all in. We are talking about infection right now. Ah, oh, I seen it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. That's good. So penicillin, I see it. All right. Okay. Amoxicillin, penicillin. Excellent job. Not, we don't want to do erythromycin here. Okay. We want to stay away from the, um, we want to stay away from the mycins. Okay. The macrolides, the aminoglycosides. We don't want to give those ones. But penicillin and amoxicillin, just fine, just fine. All right. Hey, you guys are doing great. This is Winning Wednesday. On a Winning Wednesday, it is well. I'll try to, I'll, I'll get into some of your other questions. Right now, we're talking about breastfeeding, and we're looking at it from a perspective of NCLEX, talking about the challenges of breastfeeding. And afterwards, I'll try to answer some of your questions. Breastfeeding positions here. Um, this is just more so, more so for the purposes of exposure. There are many comfortable positions that you can um, breastfeed in. So it just depends on the mom and the baby's comfort level. The idea is that if the latch is proper and the mom is comfortable, comfortable, then all of these are equally fine. Okay, here we go. This is information that you can, you will, and you must consider. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is how long that milk is good on the countertop, in the refrigerator, and or frozen. And these are three ways that you actually store breast milk. So you have to, um, you want to be aware of them. Okay. All right. Okay, so if we are talking about, um, we're going to look at the three categories of milk. Oh, man, we're going to talk about uh, freshly pumped milk or expressed milk on the countertop. On the countertop, it is good for up to four hours. So you can leave that milk out on the countertop for up to four hours. Okay. If you refrigerate it, it's going to be four days four days good. And if it's frozen, six months, okay? If it's frozen, six months is best. Up to 12 months is acceptable. Okay, does that make sense to everybody how I'm doing this? Okay. All right. If um, you have previously frozen milk, Okay, you froze it, you froze it, and you want to use it two months later, three months later. Once you leave it out on the countertop, all right, 
It's thawed out, it's one to two hours. If you put it in the refrigerator, you have up to one day to use it. And then you can never refreeze human milk, okay? After it's been thawed out. So that's very important for us to know, okay? And so if you, this is a great question. I love this question. I think we addressed it and this is what I think. So if you bring it out from the freezer, can the remaining be returned? So that answer would be no, we're not gonna refreeze it again. Actually, um, it says here, leftover from a feeding, you use it within two hours after the baby is finished. Okay. All right. Are we, so we're really learning, we're really getting into it. We're just discussing this topic. I've never really talked about this topic in this much detail. This is my first winning Wednesday doing this topic. So I'm happy that you made it to this class. All right. Um, Sure thing. Can one breastfeed a pregnant for another baby? Yep. Yep. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. All right. And good question. Good question. Coming in. Okay, here we go. We got our NCLEX question times. Let's get into it. Woo. A breastfeeding mother reported having warm, red, painful breasts and a temperature of 38.2 degrees Celsius. What should the nurse do? Number one, tell the mother to breastfeed her infant using the unaffected breast. Two, refer the mother to the healthcare provider. Three, inform the mom to stop breastfeeding. Four, encourage to start warm compress to the affected breast. What should the nurse do? This is good. This is good. What say if you guys? I got some fours. Hey, that's it? Just one four? I got some twos, some fours. Oh, I love it when we can get it down to two and then we have to make a quick split decision. That's what this is about. And I'm glad I did this question because it looks like it's going to be a cliffhanger and we're going to be wondering who indeed came out correct. Is it two or is it four? Correct answer is two. Uh, yes, people, this is serious. The mom is exhibiting a breast infection. And so in that instance, we really don't need, we really don't need any more information because the mom is having signs of an infection. And so there's not much that you can do about it as the nurse. You gotta, you're gonna have to send this mom to the healthcare provider for the next steps. But you guys know, the inside the signs of mastitis this is what we're talking about so if you just joined us <clears throat> you may have gotten it wrong however it's all about the content baby it's all about the content that is how you pass NCLEX this is essentially just knowing what mastitis is and knowing the treatment of it <clears throat> excuse me and the treatment of mastitis we said was antibiotics we as nurses don't have access to antibiotics. The trouble with picking number four, just putting a warm compress on the breast, that can help reduce some of the discomfort, but that is not the correct therapy for the situation. So if you know that a patient needs to go to the doctors, but you give them something else to do instead, then that is going to essentially delay the treatment of that patient. And for NCLEX, that's a no, no. That's a no, 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 no. You don't want to do that, right? You want to make it. And this is, this is very critical, okay? Because staff, the reason why this is so critical, the reason why this infection has to be treated is because staff, if it gets into the bloodstream of your patient, then we have an issue with what? What do we have an issue with? If we let this staph infection get into our patient's bloodstream, Forget breastfeeding, that's going to be like the last thing on our minds if we don't control this mastitis. What's going to be more critical than that? <laughs> and this is, this is something that I go over in the VT. So if you love our study sessions and you want to dive into the full version of my NCLEX review um, and get inside your NCLEX virtual trainer, now is the time to use the code INVEST. If you go to remarnurse.com, you can get into my virtual trainer and really get the entire picture of what it is that I do. 
This is a small part of how we walk through the content together. All right. Absolutely. Sepsis. Sepsis is going to be the result of a person putting a warm compress on their breast instead of going to the healthcare provider. All right. And think about it. Think about how important it is to be able to tell a mom immediately you need antibiotics because when you are a new mother, I'm telling you guys, this is my experience. The last thing you want to do is go to the doctor. You don't want, you already have so many unnecessary doctor's appointments. You got to take the baby. You got to have the baby. Then in two days after having a baby, you got to take the baby to go get checked up. Not you, the person who just had the baby, but the baby has to get checked up. And then you may have some other things you got to do. Go to the pharmacy, changing diapers, not sleeping. And so if somebody says, hey, just put a warm compress on that thing and go to sleep, that's what the mom is going to do. And she may wait three or four days before she actually decides to go to the doctors. And by then septicemia. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all feel me tonight. It's a real issue and you have to be able to recognize these cues. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. Okay. Question number two is this, the, the infant latches onto the breast, but the mother's nipples are extremely sore after each feeding. The nurse observes that she needs further instruction about breastfeeding when she verbalizes. Number one, the baby needs the whole nipple and areola in his mouth as possible to prevent my nipples to soar. Two, I can put breast milk on my nipples to heal the sore areas. Three, as long as some of my nipple is in the baby's mouth, the baby will receive enough milk. Four, feeding the baby for 30 minutes on each side will not make my breasts sore. Man. The nurse observes that she needs further instruction about breastfeeding when she verbalizes when she verbalizes which of the following? What do you guys say about this one? Woo. I am, I am. Here, I'm seeing these answers. I'm seeing these answers and I myself am interested to know. <laughs> All right. Um, this, 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 when we talk about reading being fundamental, you have to make sure you are answering the situation that is being presented. Okay. You have to make sure you're answering the situation that's being presented. And so here, it's important to remind the mother, as I'm looking at the comments, <laughs> to latch the infant as much as possible on the mother's nipples and the areola in the mouth to establish a better latch. That is, that is the issue here with this mom, all right? That's the issue. So that is what you want to address. You got to address the situation that's being presented. Yes, there might be another there might be another statement that may sound a little funny and crazy, but it's not related to what we're talking about, okay? And I, I've been saying this, I'm gonna say it again. A big part of your success on taking NCLEX will be taking the right NCLEX. And the right NCLEX is the one that NCSBN gives you, not the one in your mind not the one that you are interpreting, that you are making up along the way, okay? You need to address what they're asking you to address. And so here we're talking about nipples are extremely sore after each feeding, okay? Um, and so what is what, is, what are we gonna address? What's the issue? It's number three, okay? I gotta move on. I gotta go. 
We, we are really studying here. Okay, a breastfeeding mother asked the nurse how much breast, um, how breast milk differs from cow's milk. The nurse recognizes that breast milk is higher in which of the following? Number one, fat. Two, iron. Three, sodium. Four, calcium. Mm. What are we saying here? What is the difference? What is the difference between cow's milk and breast milk? I, what do you guys say? <laughs> is it one, fat, two, iron, three, sodium, four, calcium? Hmm. This kind of question will sober you up immediately because just when you think you know, mm, mm, mm. Just when you think you're a nurse, you get asked a basic question like this and you have no idea what is going on. I, I mean, what is the difference? I love it. I love it, guys. And some people are like, you know what? I never thought about it. Okay, correct answer is number one, it is fat, okay? Breast milk has a higher fat content and less iron content than milk, however, the iron absorption from breast milk is greater than with cow's milk. Man, this was a real revelation when I learned this, okay? Which I learned it in nursing school, but I also learned it as a breastfeeding mom. When you think, you know, number one, let's go to the fat content. Let's answer this question. Breast milk is higher in fat. And yes, in my course, I say that is why um, you cannot have babies who are under a year old on cow's milk. You can't have them on cow's milk. So like if a mom says, oh, well, sometimes I give my baby 2% milk or whole milk when I don't have enough formula or when I can't pump, that is a huge red flag on NCLEX that will always be wrong because babies need, babies need fat in order for that brain to develop. And they get the fat in the mom's breast milk or formula. You will not find enough in cow's milk for the infant who is growing. Okay, so that's number one. Um, fat, remember that. Cow's milk, who would have thought? Like less fat. Um, but in breast milk, though, there's not technically enough iron. So breastfed babies are sometimes given uh, iron supplements to help facilitate the iron requirements that they need. Okay. So, hey, who's glad they showed up today? Because we are learning. We're learning the little things. So again, when we talk about breast milk and cow's milk that you drink out of the refrigerator, breast milk has more fat in it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Here we go. Question number four. The nurse teaches the mother how to store breast milk. The mother needs further instruction if she states, number one, I can let the milk stay in the countertop for up to one hour. Two, I need to label the milk with the date, time, and amount. Three, I can store the milk for 14 days in the refrigerator. Or four, I can keep the milk in the freezer for up to three months. Now, everybody ought to get this one correct because this is something that we actually went over tonight. So if you were here on time for a class, you have these notes, you showed up, you made it to class, you're ready to rock it out. What's the right answer? What is, and we're talking about, whew, we are talking about breastfeeding, and right now we're talking about just storing breast milk. Wow, I mean, how long can you keep it in the freezer? How long can you keep it in the countertop? How long can you keep it together, okay? Keeping it holy, how can you do it? We're talking about breast milk. The correct answer is, <laughs> is number three, okay? Not 14 days, mom, that's way too long. Four days is our maximum for the refrigerator, for the refrigerated breast milk. Okay. Easy. And again, when you know the content, these questions become so much easier. But you don't know 
what you don't know. All right. All right. Next question is this. The mother tells the nurse that she has been experiencing breast engorgement. The nurse teaches the mother that before nursing her baby, she should do which of the following? Number one, apply cold compress to the nipples. Two, apply nipples gently with lanolin cream. Three, express a little amount of breast milk. Four, offer milk formula. Ooh, so good. Remember, breast engorgement is that painful, swollen breast. Okay? Painful, swollen breast. So the nurse should teach the mom before nursing the baby that she should do which of the following? All my moms out here representing and my dad's out here to know a little bit of something about something. Here, what's going to be the correct answer? And I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys are showing up and showing out almost 600 nurses on a Wednesday night. Man, if we were all in one class together, we would be rocking it. We would be the loudest group. Man, okay. Um, shout out to my Remar nurses representing in the house. All kinds of nurses all over. Remar nurse, four years deep in this thing. I like you. Thank you for coming back. Hey, thank you for coming back. Okay, so the correct answer is going to be this. Express a little amount of breast milk. Yes, yes, yes. Because doing this is going to help improve the milk flow. Also, it is going to give the baby um, a, a better chance to receive that hind milk. Remember, when... Um, Remember when breast milk comes out in the beginning, it is a little bit watery, it is a little bit thinner, but after that you get that um, more thick, deep, rich breast milk that the baby actually needs. So if you can have the mom to relieve um, her engorgement by pumping some milk out, then the baby is gonna have a better chance of getting the milk um, that it really actually needs, as well as having a better milk flow. So much to know about breastfeeding. Who knew that the who knew that it would get so deep? Okay, who knew that it was would get so deep? So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're feeling well about this content. This is what we do here. This is what we do here, and also this is what we do inside the virtual trainer with the Quick Facts book. If you get the package together. It is indeed um, the best way to, to prepare with my material for the NCLEX exam. So I'm super proud of it. And um, I want you guys, if you are interested in studying, knowing more about the program, text the word NCLEX, okay? Text the word NCLEX to my number. It is here. This is it, okay? It is 855 Six nine six zero one three two. Can you do that? Can you do that for me? Just text the word NCLEX and take a screenshot, write it down if you want to. Okay. 855. You got to text the word NCLEX though. If you don't text the word NCLEX, it's not going to pop off like, it, like it's supposed to. Okay. So text the word NCLEX to 855-696-0132. Two. Okay, everybody, we are going to go into a small question and answer section, a small question and answer section with me. Hi there, for you guys who are just joining me. My name is Regina Callion, and I am the leader of Remar Nurses all over the globe. And right now I'm doing questions and answers. So whatever you want to ask me, I'm here. I got a few minutes tonight. I got time tonight. So we're talking about um, we're talking about passing NCLEX. We're talking about being responsible nurses. We can talk about next generation NCLEX for those of you who are um, anticipating next generation NCLEX. I'm really excited because for next generation NCLEX, I am working now with educators. 
I'm actually working with a lot of nursing instructors who want to get their nursing students ready for NCLEX. And so I love that because there's nothing wrong with somebody saying, I need help. And some of our problem as nursing students is that we are unable to learn what we think we already know. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are unable to learn what we think we already know. I'm going to come back to that, but let's go here. Um, is it advisable to start the VT while waiting for ATT? Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to start the virtual trainer because as soon as you get your ATT, you want to be able to study and schedule at the same time. So if you already have part of your studying done, you're in the mentality to study, you can go ahead and make that date. My fear is that, you know, you get your ATT and then you say, okay, well, I'm going to start studying now that I have my ATT and then life happens. You know, I like COVID was enough for me when COVID happened. What, what testing centers were shut down, people's tests were getting canceled. So I'm good on that. I don't know what's going on with the monkeypox. I just would prefer you to already be on your way so that you can study as soon as you want. Um, and you can test as soon as you want. Love that. Remar is a game changer. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Yes. Begin studying while you wait for your ATT. Okay, when will the next generation questions begin? That's a great question, Sean. Um, the next generation questions, actually, people are seeing them. People have been seeing them on the research section of their test, which is um, if you take NCLEX now, you have the opportunity to extend your NCLEX experience with the research section. And this does not count towards your grade. However, you will be volunteering to do next generation NCLEX questions, but they don't count. You just are being exposed to them and they want to see how you do with them. But um, officially, we are expecting April 1st, 2023 for the next generation NCLEX items to appear on the NCLEX RN and the NCLEX PN exam. They will appear at the very same time for this. So if you think of August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, you just got eight months to do what you need to do. Take this exam. If you are not graduating until then, there's nothing we can do about it. But certainly, if you have the opportunity to get your ATT and test now, hacelo. do it, do it, do it, because you don't want to take the next generation NCLEX if you don't have to. I can't say that enough, okay? Um, I would like to know if the new NCLEX is going to be harder. I think it depends uh, on the student. I think it depends on how you decide to prepare for it. Um, it will be harder if you have never seen the test items before, the new test items. If you have never done a case study, um, if, if you have not in your mind thought about the clinical judgment measurement model and how you apply it to the nursing content that you study, it's going to be tough. I don't necessarily think the content is tougher. It, it will be the same information, but I think the way you think about it has to be different. Okay. Um, <laughs> somebody said, how can you get us ready? How can you get us ready? Oh, I'm on it. I'm on it. Like I said, I'm already there. I'm there. I am so there that I'm holding myself back right now. And I am allowing the proper transition to happen. And so right now, my focus is really on encouraging and motivating those of you who can take it to take it now. Because there is going to come a time where... Um, I will fully on just be talking about next generation NCLEX. But that time is not right now. That doesn't benefit those of you who have the boat coming by now and can jump on it. And so um, I'm reserving it. I'm going to be reserving that space for my people who will be taking next generation NCLEX. But don't worry, I'll, I'm, I got something to get you guys prepared. Okay, um, that's it.
content? Do you have a quiz bank in the Remar Review? I do. I have a question bank um, for the virtual trainer. So there's questions in the virtual trainer. There is probably about five, 600 questions between the virtual trainer and quick facts. However, some of you just love the questions. So I have a question bank that you can also purchase for an additional 1,200 questions. And that's just $29. So take advantage of it. You can check it out at remarnurse.com if you want to try my question bank, remarnurse.com, okay? Uh, what else? Thank you, Regina. I got my first shift book today. Hey, first shift. Do I have one handy? Uh, it's here. So first shift is my book for new nurses who are now on the floor, okay? Who are now on the floor and how to dominate your first two years in nursing. So all the things I learned as a new nurse, ah, get the first shift book if you want to know about it. If you want to know about the underground, underground. All right. Um, somebody says here, when to study the fundamentals in the VT. So fundamentals is a course in the virtual trainer. I'm glad you saw it. And I would say if you, hmm, I would say this, study or follow your study calendar. Follow your study calendar. If you follow your study calendar and you want to do more, like after your session is over, then do the fundamentals. But prioritize always the study calendar for the VT because there are people who never do the fundamentals and pass NCLEX with just a review course. And so I don't want to slow your progress down because you may not need the fundamentals review. But if you are looking at it and you're like, mm, I like what I'm seeing here, the videos are not that long. So just do your study calendar information first and then do a part of the um, and then do part of the the fundamentals course inside of the virtual trainer. OK, I am almost at the end of my VT. I love it. Everybody should get it. Oh, I'm so glad that that just made my night. That comment right there. That's amazing. <laughs> Okay, that book got me hired and dominated my interview. Thank you. First shift, I'm telling you guys, I used to do travel nursing. And one of the things about travel nursing is that you only have jobs for a short period of time. And so when you end a job, you have to reapply for another job. And so I was doing that all the time. And I was always doing interviews. So there is no interview that I'm afraid of. And so I put all the questions that I learned from the interviews in first shift. And I also put, I gotta grab a book now. Here it is. Here's one. So it's called first shift, how to write, how to get ready for your first shift, but also how to dominate um, your first two years of nursing. So this is my insider's book. And so I also not only put the, the questions, but also how I answered the questions, because that's the real tricky part. Just knowing the questions is half the battle. OK. All right. So if you want to be an excellent nurse after NCLEX, this is it. You find the calendar in your study vault. You find the calendar in your study vault. OK. Uh, in your, I'm sorry. In your file vault. That's where you find the calendar. What, what advice can you give someone who has test anxiety? Oh, I was just, I, honestly, this is a universal problem. I was just talking to my kids tonight about test anxiety, not test anxiety because they're eight and five, but anxiety in general. My son right now is five years old and you guys know um, he is in that stage where his imagination is very big. And so he's afraid of the dark. And so we were talking about how anxiety is unique because anxiety is essentially fear of something that is not real, fear of uh, a perceived threat. So you are in your mind imagining that something um, bad or dangerous is going to happen to you. And so your body is responding to that thought, not knowing that the thought is not real. Okay. And so it is, you have to pray. It is, a, it is a, it's a spiritual attack. Um, and we have test anxiety because in our minds, we believe that if we don't perform well, something bad is going to happen to us right? We have this doom 
that if I don't pass NCLEX, then my life will be ruined. I may um, never make it in nursing. Whatever thoughts you have that makes you anxious about this test, the truth of the matter is that they're not real. The truth of the matter is that even if you don't pass NCLEX, guess what? You have not actually endured any bodily harm. You are still a person of value. You can pass NCLEX on a different day. You still can be an amazing nurse. No patient is going to say, hey, hey, hey. How many times did you have to take NCLEX? Because that's very meaningful to me. And I only want nurses who have taken it less than five times to care for me. Right. And so none of those things are going to happen. So we have to properly have a, a clear perspective of what this test is. This test is not the end all be all. This test is a very nice opportunity for you to get something that you worked hard for. OK, um, that's what it is. It's an opportunity. It is. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. So many people want to be nurses. And so if you make it to the point where you can actually test, that's a celebration right there. OK, um, I would say also use the anxiety for the good. Anxiety is given to us as um, as a resource. When we typically feel anxiety in a healthy way, it's telling us to move out of a place. Right. So if you see a bear coming to you and you have anxiety, that's proper. OK, and so that anxiety, that adrenaline that epinephrine is going to tell you to run. It's going to help you run faster. It's going to help you move from danger, right? And so we have a healthy amount of that that will say, you know what? I got to get out of here. What am I doing at this job? Why am I here? Why am I, you know, being less than I, I can be? Why am I living below my attention, potential? That's the anxiety. Like you should think of, <laughs> you should literally, instead of being, like afraid to take the NCLEX, running from it, you should be running towards it. You should be thinking, what's stopping me from taking this test? I need to get here because it's gonna change my life. I need to get here because this is the way that I level up in all areas of my life, all right? And so um, that's what I say about anxiety, having test anxiety. Um, look at the perspective of the test. Look at the perspective of the test. This is a huge opportunity, not something you should be uh, afraid of, something you should be looking forward to, okay? Test anxiety. I also have a free workshop on YouTube if you wanna spend some more time with me on it. Um, just look at my test anxiety workshop. There's a workbook you can print out, you can fill out, okay? What else? Mm, let's see. How should a nurse student go about studying? I think uh, for those people who struggle with direction, who don't know when to study, how long to study um, inside of your virtual trainer, um, I think there is the study calendar. Some of the new, um, some of my new students, I think in the book, there's a study calendar. I don't know if you have that edition, but everything is the same. We just put it in some of the books. But if you don't have the book with the study calendar in it, no problem. You can go into your file vault and get the study calendar from my specific program. If you don't have my program, some tips I would give you in general is to pick one resource and stick with it. Also, limit your studying no more than three hours a day. And it doesn't have to be all at one time. Literally break your, break your studying up, okay? Sit down and say for the next 10 minutes, for the next 20 minutes, even if you can only do five minutes, for the next five minutes, I'm going to put my phone down, okay? I'm not eating or drinking anything. I'm literally just going to focus on this specific material and study that material, okay? Always start first with your content like we did tonight and then segue into questions, Um don't just try to do questions first because you will end up trying to connect questions to make sense as opposed to just studying like a body of work, okay? Studying the body of work. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I get that. Being out of school since 01, this will be a journey and this will be a process for you. Um, and I hope now as I'm reading this that you still are, um, you know, you're still excited about the journey as well. Um, and then also that, you know, you have fully grieved your dad because that's a huge loss. I don't know what that pain is like, but I imagine that um, it takes time. It takes time to uh, process and and experience life without that important person to you. So um, I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you tonight. Okay, um, I have Team Remar also in the comments and they are answering your questions about if you want to renew your virtual trainer if for whatever reason you had it and you don't have it anymore please send an email to support at remarreview.com okay and that will allow you to get back into your virtual trainer hey life happens life happens so yeah i get it i get it but i'm i'm more excited about you saying i got to get back on track you know I'm not where I should be. Like I said, if you have anxiety over anything, have anxiety about living below your potential. Ah, living below your potential and not being paid for your value. That's the thing that gets me. You guys come on here and you answer questions that are so challenging and so rare. You guys have a knowledge that is, um, it's so needed. It's rare. Do you know how many people know, even know what ferrosamide is, how it works in the body? Do you know how often that's prescribed and how many people are taking it? But you know what it is. You know how it works. You know what to watch out for. You know how, how valuable your mind is? I need you to see yourself as that. I need you to see yourself as this whole vibe, okay? Because that's what you are. All right, Angela, you can do it. Yes, my last attempt was 2011 and you took it and passed in June, July. Amazing, wow. Also, I am doing a 30 day challenge right now. That's another thing I forgot. Join me every day. Okay. We just started the beginning of the month. So we have the rest of the month every day. I will be giving you a challenge with questions, with video content. If you have this virtual trainer, do the challenge with me because I will be going over the content in this book. You can sign up for it. Okay. Go to remarnurse.com forward slash 30 days. If you have these two books, do the challenge with me. If you don't have these books, it's all right you can still do the challenge with me. We're going over NCLEX content. So you should have the information either way. You can get my NCLEX review at remarnurse.com. Okay. That's where I keep all of my products. All right. I love it. Okay, guys. Yes, this is for RN and PN. RN and PN. Okay. Um, the virtual trainer is for the registered nurse and the practical nurse. Okay, awesome. All right, yes, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you get to a place of discomfort long enough, you will say, I don't wanna do this anymore. I'm a nurse, I don't care. I don't care that I don't have my license, my calling, my ministry is in the field of nursing. So then you won't care about being afraid of the exam, the money you have to pay, the money you won't you will begin to care less okay about all those things because you just got to get to the place all right had to read a lot of passages habakkuk 2 2 and 3 in romans 8 28 to keep me spiritually strong thank you for those two passages thank you for those two passages um what she say habakkuk 2 2 and 3 let's read that real quick real quick real quick for you guys who have not done a devotional um, I thought I had a, okay. Yeah. Let's just, let's just read what that say. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay. We are looking at Habakkuk two, two and three. Okay. 
Why didn't I know this? And the Lord answered me. Wait, Father God, please help us to read this word and help it to resonate in our hearts in the way that you intend for it too. In Jesus name, amen. All right. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. <laughs> Love that. Man, it says, wait for that vision. Wait for it. It will surely come. Oh, man. And it will not tarry. Man, come on with it. Come on, somebody. Come on. You got to see that thing. It's plain. You can, you will, you must. You can, you will, you must. All right, Nurse Nancy. You sending us out with a bang. All right. That's a great passage. I agree, man. That's just a great passage because you think about it. How do you wait on God to do something? 16th try, Remar Nurses. What? All right, Nancy, all right, 16th try. Remar Nurses, you can do it. Wow. I need your, I need your testimonial. <laughs> Am I, if I'm reading this right, I need your testimonial because you surely, surely, surely held on to that promise. I'm proud that you're a Remar nurse. Straight up, no lie. I'm proud that you're a Remar nurse. That says so much to me. You didn't give up. And when we are waiting for God to do this thing in our lives, we're not just sitting there like, hurry up, God, where am I in line? Am I number three? Am I number 30? I need to know, God. I need to know like where I am. No, you're literally working. You're serving. You're still ministering. You're still remaining positive. You're congratulating people. That's the best thing I see with you guys. You are congratulating people. In Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good, right? Yeah. All things work together. Everything you're going through. In the end, it will be it will be so you can be like Nurse Nancy and give a testimony, come back and say, it, it may not have been easy, but uh surely with God it's possible. Hey, have we transitioned? Are we studying? What are we doing now? This is just praise and what is this praise and worship time? Y'all, I love y'all. This is what we do here at Remar. If this is your first time joining Remar. Oh, we like this all the time. Don't let me bring Mark up in here. Don't let me bring Mark up in here because y'all know. <laughs> y'all know we really get into a vibe when he comes. So winning Wednesday. I think we've won today. I honestly think we've won today. You know, we won today. Um, if not, it, 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 studying the content was great, but remembering God's promises is even better. OK, remembering God's promises that he's written out for us is even better because you cannot do this thing. You cannot do this thing called nursing. In your own strength, it is very difficult. It takes more from you than it gives. And that's why it's a ministry. And so if you don't have that source of power coming in, you gonna be broken down and very raggedy quickly in nursing. And you're not gonna like it. You're not gonna enjoy it. Yes, because this is a very hard field to be in. Is it amazing? Absolutely. Are there perks? There are, I talk about them all the time. You guys know I do. When you get your nursing license, you are going to immediately have doors open. You're going to be able to essentially do what you want to do. You're going to be able to live where you want to live. You're going to be able to drive what you want to drive. You're going to be able to buy what you want to buy. I mean, that's just the reality of being a nurse. When I go somewhere, I'm not counting like, oh, man, you know, can I afford to supersize this whatever? I don't think in terms of that, okay? Okay. I don't have to think, am I going to be able to pay a light bill? No, I can pay my light bill. I can pay my mom's light bill. I can pay my brother's light bill. I mean, that was my experience since I graduated from 
nursing school and passed NCLEX. I immediately was in a better position financially than anybody in my family. Just being honest, I don't come from a rich family. Um, my parents didn't go to college. So, um, you know, I was the first one with a, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I was. Yeah, I was the first one to go to a four-year scholarship. My brother ended up, my younger brother ended up graduating before me, technically. But um, even still, he, um, his degree was in criminal justice and mine was in nursing. So I um, just for like apples to apples, he came out making like maybe $15 an hour. My first job, I made like $30, $33 an hour, something like that. You know what I mean? So it, being a nurse changed my life. Imagine you going from somebody who couldn't afford it to, you know, like if my car broke down, that set me back <laughs> significantly. Right. If I had to pay four hundred dollars to get my car fixed, I was pretty much in financial ruin. I had no savings account as a college student. I mean, I don't know. Maybe y'all did, but I didn't. I, you know, I was a poor person before I became a nurse. My life consisted of like the dollar menu. And is there anybody like are y'all relating to me? <laughs> I mean. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too transparent. This is, you know, educators always try to present like, mm, we always like, we know everything. Like, you know, in nursing school, like educators are always like, I know more than you. My life is here. You guys are, I'm not like that. Like I was very poor. Okay. Um, before I became a nurse. And so when I became a nurse and got my license, it was an experience for me. Um, it changed my life. Not only did I get like the respect of having to achieve this thing, you know, like I became a nurse, but also at the same time, um, okay, also at the same time, I um, was able to change the lives of others around me. And so um, I, I do have to thank God that I was able to uh, accomplish this major goal, okay? accomplish this major goal. So um, it will be the same for you guys. It will be the same for you, but you have to be persistent and you have to understand that with great power comes great responsibility. Okay. Great power comes great responsibility. And so again, what I'm saying is that nursing is a grind, no matter what level you do it on. And um, the, re the rewards, though, are there for those who are really seeking to help other people. That's the difference. Like, being a nurse is great, but when you have the desire and compassion to help other people, you will be rewarded for that. You will be recognized for that, okay? Um, and so I got something really that I wanted to share with you guys. I got this thing from YouTube. So those of you who are watching me on YouTube, they sent me a very special box that I will be un op opening up, all right? And this box, I, some of you may guess what it is, but this is a huge, huge recognition of the grind that I've been doing over 10 years, over 10 years on YouTube. And so they sent me out this thing and I'm gonna open it later, all right? But, uh, I, you know, this is what it is, Winning Wednesdays. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it real with you guys because at the end of the day, passing NCLEX is a small part of the journey. You know, I passed NCLEX years ago, okay? Um, I'm still studying for the exam. I'm unique in that way. I'm still studying for the exam. Most of you guys, when you pass NCLEX, you'll never, you'll never want to talk about it again, <laughs> but I'm still studying for the exam and um, I'm with you guys. I'm right with you guys. And I love our community because I'm learning from you. I'm learning from you. So go ahead, tap in, tell your friends about Remar. Um, we are definitely winning. We out here winning. We out here getting our license our licenses 
And it is, um, it's an amazing feeling to be a part of your journey. Well, I've kept you so long. It's time for us to close this study session. I'll be back. I'll be back. And I hope that you uh, will be here too. It makes a difference to me. Sometimes when I hop on here, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure how many people will show up or who will show up, but I'm still committed to making sure that if you choose to study with me, I'm here and we're going over some good stuff and we're learning. Team Remar is also here too with you guys and we love what we do. We talk about you guys every single time we meet. We are excited for you. We share your stories. We pray for you guys. Um, and so you are important and you are special to us. Okay. And we do, we say this thing, you can, you will, you must pass in Clex. And the reason why we say it is because it's a simple, it's a simple idea that if you embrace it, it will move you forward. And it's easy for you to remember, right? It's easy for you to remember. I can, I will, and I must pass NCLEX. It doesn't leave room for excuses. We don't have to acknowledge how much, you know, hurt you've experienced. We don't take time to think about past failures. It doesn't matter, okay? You can, you will, and you must. Pass NCLEX. That's it. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. It's that simple. And so part of winning Wednesday is showing up and learning something new. And sometimes it's not about the content at all. It's about somebody that's going to come on here and bless us with a Bible verse that we need to remember. Or somebody saying, I did it and so can you. Or me saying, I once was a poor girl. And now look at me. Look at me. Y'all know I was in Vegas last week. I was in Vegas yesterday. Actually, I was in Vegas yesterday with Mark. We just took a trip to Vegas. Um, I took my parents for their anniversary. And it was amazing time. Hot as ever. If you've ever been to Vegas, it's so hot. But it was it was a great time. It was We went to a show. We went out to eat. Um, and I just had a great restful weekend. And I was able to do that. Why? Because I'm so fly. But also because I'm a nurse. And um, that's just what nurses do. Okay? We live this amazing life when we love what we do. All right? So that's it, guys. That's it. Winning Wednesday has been served to you. I want to talk to you more, but I got to get off of here. So text me the word NCLEX, okay? Text me the word NCLEX to 855-696-0132. As soon as I finished nursing school, I decided to try Remar Review to prepare for NCLEX. And so I purchased the virtual trainer NCLEX as well as the quick facts and I really enjoy the way Regina teaches everything you need to know for NCLEX. Everything is well organized and it prepares you for NCLEX basically. Uh, it, it gives you all the information you need to know and I pass NCLEX on my first attempt. So thank you Regina for all of your help and I highly recommend it.